Welcome to the Nowell Zone. I'm Anal. Today we are discussing a very important topic and I choose to call it the bite-sized 90%. What does it mean, the bite-sized 90%? There's two things here that are really crucial if the warrior is to lead successfully the life of a warrior. Without these two things, without the 90% and without the bite-sized 90%, there's really very little chance. Without this, you're depending on luck and good fortune or hoping and wishing something will happen, all this kind of stuff. And so when I was apprenticing, this is what the way it was explained to me. And then I put my own twist on it and I'll explain this to you. This is part of a masterclass. Join me every Sunday, 8 p.m. if you can. It's very, very useful and uh, very, very relevant. We have questions and answers. We have discussions very, very uh, deep sometimes, very good discussion. So I urge you to come and uh, attend. All right, so the bite size 90%. First off, let's take the 90%. And why success, the word success, is so vitally important for the warrior. If you do not concern yourself with the word success, Forget about, uh, at the very least, forget about being a, some kind of Toltec warrior one day. Believe me, you're not a Toltec warrior. If you fancy yourself one, then you can stop watching and go away. You don't need, you don't need this video. But anyone else who wishes to learn, you have got to concern yourself with success. In every area of your life, you have got to. Because what's the alternative? Think about it. You want the alternative to success? <laughs> Is that what you want in your life? <laughs> so it is kind of common sense to concern ourselves greatly with the idea of success. Now, the problem with the success that you know, the word association, the neuro-linguistic programming of the word success that has been given to you, that you know through these indoctrination camps, brainwashing camps called uh, schools, standardized education around the world. It's the same deal everywhere. Copy paste uh, brainwashing camps around the world. The problem with the success that you understand is that it is completely contrary to the success that concerns warriors. Now that's a topic for another video. Let's just pick up from where it is now apparent to the apprentice, to the student, to the seeker, to the journeyman, what success they are actually looking for, and it is not the success of the average man's consensus insanity. However, the results are the same. Look at Castaneda. He was a world famous author, never, never wrote anything in his life. First book, shot up in, it's still an all time classic, The Teachings of Don Juan, right? That's success. That guy was a millionaire uh, in his late 20s, I believe, or I might be wrong, but something like that. Young. Millionaire at a time when a million dollars really did mean a big achievement. Big, it's a big achievement today. But in those days, it really did mean something. He was a millionaire. Doing what he, uh, not working for other people or being a CEO of a bank or some silly thing like that, but actually off his own back. He was specifically instructed by uh, Don Juan to make writing his book an act of impeccable power or an impeccable act of power. And he did it. What a great uh, success, right? He really put it to the test and won out. This is what we're looking at. This is why success is important for the warrior. 
And if you haven't seriously thought about this topic and how it should apply to you at all costs, right? Or at the very least at the cost of your bad habits and your laziness and all your nonsense, inconsistency and lack of discipline. <laughs> yeah. Then you must turn this around and be concerned about success. You really must. So let's pick up the, the topic that success is clear to you. It is important to you. It is the most important thing in your life. In fact, at least at a certain for a certain time. And let's break down the concern of the warrior to be successful into two things. How does the warrior virtually guarantee in their life? Because we can't afford to faff about. We don't have the time to be faffing and reinvent, reinventing the wheel of success. Like, okay, I will do it my way. No, there are certain principles in place that can be adapted, made more efficient if that's what's needed and then applied, it will give you success. It's given success to many others. 90% rule. The 90% rule. This is very similar to the axiom that I have used in my life and I have talked about before in my videos, train but do not strain. Now, but, but how do we go about doing this train but do not strain? Because as soon as you kind of start trying to apply this principle, train but do not strain, all manner of complications set in. All manner of questions start coming, but how about this and how about that? When do I know when to stop? When do I know when to push through? All those things. So here's a more concrete and dependable, reliable way to ensure that you don't burn out and that you don't plateau, the two enemies of success, right? Plateau means you're just mindlessly doing the same thing and not improving. Hoping and wishing that you will improve with just mindless robot, like, uh, hoping that that will somehow produce success for you. It doesn't work like that. That's not that's not going to produce success for you. 90% rule means that you have got to get your consistent action, your consistent action, which comprises of intelligent repetitions. You've got to get it up to 90% of the time. Why this is important is because this is how your, how your learning curve is. I'll tell you what your learning curve is like. You get excited in the beginning. It's all rah, rah, yeah, oh, I shall do this. I am so inspired. Yes, yes, yes. Ah! And you go all out. I'm going to do 100 push-ups a day and then walk 5,000 miles. Then I'm going to cross the sea swimming and that's how I'm going to be fit and I'm not going to eat anything fast for 50 days. You go all out, completely berserk, completely go crazy. Right? And what happens? You burn yourself out. Before long, you're huffing and puffing and you rather eat cake than, than do all the other sh stupid decisions that you were making in your honeymoon period because you got so inspired. Right? That's, that's your learning curve. So what have you actually done? You have set yourself up for failure at the very start. I'll tell you something. Anytime an apprentice, when I ask them to come up with a schedule or something, how are you going to create success in this training, particular training? And anytime an apprentice gives me a schedule that is all out, I'm going to do this. I'm going to sit in silence for 25 hours a day. I am not going to budge from that place. I'm going to sit and I'm going to do all of this. And then I shall do 50,000 push-ups. I will do 100 million mantras. I will do this and I will do it. I already know this person is useless. 
useless to themselves, useless. I don't care, do what you like, you know, give me your money, keep giving me your money, I don't give a shit. But you're useless to yourself. So then I sit and tell them, this is not the way, you're setting yourself up for failure. And anytime an apprentice, I ask them, okay, how are you gonna do this then? And they go, you know, I will start with one push-up a day. Just one. I'll start one push-up a day. Next week, I will do two push-ups a day. Then I'm going to introduce one day rest, which means six days I will do three push-ups a day. One day rest. Then I will do four push-ups a day. And so on and so forth. I already know this person's gonna, they're, they're virtually guaranteed themselves success because the attitude is correct. This person understands how to befriend success and beckon results. This person knows how to cultivate personal power. 90% rule. So, 90, if you can get up to 90% consistent action, you're doing very well, extremely well, extremely well. 90% consistent action is, the, is, in the, is in the professional level of anything. Amateurs get up to say 10% of the time and then it's 90% excuses and bullshit reasons, right? Uh, then some from the amateurs, you have the slightly serious, say you wanna learn golf or something, the slightly serious. They'll get up to 25%, 35% consistent action and training. Professionals get up to 60 to 70% of their time spent in training, consistent action and applying, application. the really good ones get up to 90%. So just the 90, getting up to 90%, if you, for example, you started learning Tai Chi, take two years to get up to that 90%, right? Or you wanna learn singing, 90% of the time, so say um, in a month, 30 days, 90% of the time you have been able to sit and practice singing or sit and practice your Tai Chi. Oh, not sit, but you know, practice Tai Chi. 90% of the time. 10% you leave alone. You don't, you don't go for the perfect score. I will do it every day without fail. You will fail. You already set yourself up failure, up for failure because of your ignorance and stupidity. You see how this works? This is why I say don't go for perfection or some kind of strange, uh, you know, idea in your head. Very pragmatic, very sober, start slow, build up to 90%, you're good. You're very, very good. You will uh, prevent injuries, you will prevent burnout, you will actually give time for your system to digest what you're learning, integrate what you're learning, the knowledge will go in you properly because you're giving breaks, right? In that 10%, 9% is still within the realms of the knowable, which means for example, Toltec warriors typically, I typically operate at 99% repetitions. So for example, if I decide to do something, I have enough personal power and energy, energy is the real currency that you must pay the cost, and attention, concentration, focus, attention. I have enough of that in myself to be able to repeat intelligently, fresh repetition each time, 99% uh, of, the, of the time. I've taken 20 years to get to this point, perhaps even more, right? But that's, what, that's why Toltec warriors are no joke. These guys are on a very different elite level. 
because of the level of energy we can wield for our own benefit. That 1%, I did a video on this a while back. You must watch that video, it's very, very important. That 1% you have to give to life. Life will reserve that 1% for itself. You cannot ever, it's hubris, it's empty pride to believe that you can do 100%. Life will teach you a lesson you will never forget if you if you try that for that score. <laughs> that you will never forget. It'll give you permanent a permanent lesson lodged in your body that will remind you every moment of every day not to mess with that 1%. I know innumerable cases like that. Champions, incredibly high achievers, genius level people. And they went, they had the hubris um, to think that they could go 100%. They did not give life that 1% and life took that 1% in a way that <laughs> shattered them. You don't want to be one of those people. So be cool, chill out, relax, enjoy yourself. Getting up to 90%, you're good. You're very, very good at 90%. Very good. Right? The second part of ensuring success in any endeavor, any intent that you set up for yourself. Yeah, bite-sized. Bite-sized. One push-up for a week. Then I'll do two. One push-up for a week, 90% of the time. I'm not gonna stress if I missed one day. It's okay, I've allowed, I'd factor that in 10%, it's all good. 90%, I did it, mm, nice. Second week, two push-ups. Not gonna stress if uh, I missed 10% and I, I, you know, I did it 90% of the time, I get up to 90%, I'm good, happy. Happy Japs. Third week, and so on and so forth. We build up, build up. Now here, even if bite-sized means that you decide you're fat, you're depressed, you have diseases like no one would believe, right? You're lonely, no, one, no woman looks at you, uh, you're ugly, right? Loser, nothing, living with your mom, never earned a penny in your life. All these things, imagine that like, there's someone like that. That's fine. If they can get up to 1%, their intent is to do one push-up a week, for example. That person does one push-up one day and the rest of the time they get discouraged, depressed, they start eating cake even more and chocolates and get even fatter. Fine, no problem. They did that one. They did that one push-up. That one push-up, if that person knows how, for example, if that person became an apprentice, the, the, the benefactor would tell that apprentice, don't worry about the extra cake and the, all the other bullshit for the six days you've done it. The, the day that you did that one push-up, pull on that, focus on that. Let pull yourself right out of the next week, jump off that one push-up. Do you see what I'm saying? That's bite-sized. You could only do that much. Perfectly fine. That's the bite you took. Next week, you do one push-up and just hold. Don't do the entire thing. That kind of person won't even be able to do a push-up anyway. They can just hold for, say, 10 seconds. Plus, just struggle, 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 do one push-up. Did it, yes, great. But you've added a little bit extra value there. You've held for 10 seconds. Then the next week, and you could only do two, three days of that. Fine, bite-sized. The benefactor will say, yeah, good, focus on that. Don't even think about all the other, you know, then you started binge eating again and got even more depressed and watched Netflix all day. Fine, 
do what you like. That's what we're looking at. Then the third week, the person completely flopped, didn't do anything. Okay, no problem. No problem. Fourth week, you start again with one push-up one day. Bite-sized. Bite-sized. Don't, don't go, I'm fat, deceased, poor, and got nothing in my life. I am going to be a millionaire one day. Yes. Oh, I shall have the body. There. Oh, yeah. Ooh, oh, oh. Don't do all this nonsense. Not going to happen. It's not going to happen for you. You do this, this way will slowly ensure, and then you go, okay, I'm gonna take five years to get there. Five years to get to the 90% mark. Five years, easy, no problem, five years. That person is gonna, that's an intelligent person. That's not a stupid fool, that's an intelligent person. They may be fat, diseased, poor, and uh, depressed in that time, but that person is very intelligent they will walk right out of their nonsense in five years. Wouldn't you want that? Would, would you want to fail for 10 more years or would you want to succeed in five years? Bite-sized 90%. This is the way warriors do it. The Toltec warrior way is extremely demanding. Apprentices, in fact, the info pack that I send to potential people who want to become apprentices, I say that clearly in the info pack. I say it will take you at least six months to eight months just to even understand what you're even doing. It's right there. <laughs> this is no joke. This is very demanding stuff. And I personally, as a benefactor, I go really easy on uh, apprentices. I really do. I go really easy. If I was to train them even for one week, two weeks, the way I was trained, they would run away. They would all think they're very tough. Yeah, no, 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 I'm tried on us. Yes, yes, we will do. I'm, no, you're, you're tough, tough. And they would crumble completely within a day or two. Completely finished. Because you have to build up. You have to build up slowly. It's like me saying to a, a Olympic gold medal swimmer, come on, I'll race you. I'll race you back and forth in the pool. Oh, come on. Right? Well, only a fool would say that. You know, or you can't, you, you have to build up. You have to build up your abilities. And so if you're complaining, I don't have lack of, I have lack of discipline, I don't have this, I can't be consistent, really. You're very consistent eating that cake every day. You have a lot of discipline on that one, haven't you? You have amazing discipline getting fatter and fatter. But you don't have amazing discipline getting thinner and thinner. You have amazing discipline developing a disease after a disease in your life and you take 10 years to do it. Every 10 years, a new disease crops up. Eyes have got, can't see anything anymore, thick glasses, squinting away like a little frog everywhere. Your sweat smells bad because you eat shit by right? farting all the time. Your hamstrings are gone. Can't, your belly gets, you can't even see your dick because your belly is so big. You're very, so people are very disciplined, masterful at in creating such amazing intent in their life. And then they complain, oh, I don't have discipline. Really? You've been very disciplined becoming what you've become so far, a fat toad, right? You see what I'm saying? It is a quote that uh, I, I believe it's Castaneda. I don't. Believe, I don't think it's Don Juan. Maybe it is Don Juan, who said, "You can either make we can either make ourselves happy or we can make, we can make ourselves miserable. The amount of energy it takes is exactly the same. It's the same thing. You can make yourself fat, diseased, depressed, and poor, or you can do the other success stuff. The amount of energy it's going to take is exactly the same." It takes just as much practice to become fat, diseased, poor, and uh, narcissistic 
as it does to turn it all around and go the other way. All right, I'll leave you with a fantastic quote from Don Juan himself. Uh, and that quote is, listen, listen very carefully here. If a warrior is to succeed at anything, the success must come gently with a great deal of effort. but with no stress or obsession. I'll leave it to you to ponder that quote, learn to apply it in your own life. It's, it alone uh, contains the entire formula for a successful life. Leave in the comments some stories from your own life, some examples where you have been able to apply this success formula and turn things around in your life. Leave it in the comments. Everyone would love to hear it and applaud you for your uh, excellence and your efforts. And uh, even if you have one example like this in your whole life, just one, even if it's way back then, it doesn't matter. You can jump off of that at any time of your choosing. Think about that. On that note, I will see you next week. Walk in freedom. Farewell.